In mathematical logic, the compactness theorem states that a set of first-order sentences has a model if and only if every finite subset of it has a model. This theorem is an important tool in model theory, as it provides a useful method for constructing models of any set of sentences that is finitely consistent. The compactness theorem for the propositional calculus is a consequence of Tychonoff's theorem which says that the product of compact spaces is compact applied to compact stone spaces, hence, the theorem's name. Likewise, it is analogous to the finite intersection property characterization of compactness in topological spaces. A collection of closed sets in a compact space has a non-empty intersection if every finite subcollection has a non-empty intersection. The compactness theorem is one of the two key properties, along with the downward lowenheim skolem theorem, that is used in Lindstrom's theorem to characterize first-order logic. Although there are some generalizations of the compactness theorem to non-first-order logics, the compactness theorem itself does not hold in them. History Kurt Gödel proved the countable compactness theorem in 1930. Anatoly Maltsev proved the uncountable case in 1936. Topic applications The compactness theorem has many applications in model theory, a few typical results are sketched here. The compactness theorem implies Robinson's principle, if a first-order sentence holds in every field of characteristic zero, then there exists a constant p such that the sentence holds for every field of characteristic larger than p. This can be seen as follows, suppose phi is a sentence that holds in every field of characteristic zero. Then its negation phi, together with the field axioms and the infinite sequence of sentences 1 plus 1 does not equal 0, 1 plus 1 plus 1 does not equal 0, is not satisfiable because there is no field of characteristic 0 in which phi holds, and the infinite sequence of sentences ensures any model would be a field of characteristic 0. Therefore, there is a finite subset A of these sentences that is not satisfiable. We can assume that A contains phi, the field axioms, and, for some k, the first k sentences of the form 1 plus 1 plus, plus 1 does not equal 0, because adding more sentences doesn't change unsatisfiability. Let B contain all the sentences of A except phi. Then any field with a characteristic greater than k is a model of B, and phi together with B is not satisfiable. This means that phi must hold in every model of B, which means precisely that phi holds in every field of characteristic greater than K. A second application of the compactness theorem shows that any theory that has arbitrarily large finite models, or a single infinite model, has models of arbitrary large cardinality this is the upward lowenheim skolem theorem. So, for instance, there are nonstandard models of Peano arithmetic with uncountably many natural numbers. To achieve this, let t be the initial theory and let kappa be any cardinal number. Add to the language of t1 constant symbol for every element of kappa. Then add to t a collection of sentences that say that the objects denoted by any two distinct constant symbols from the new collection are distinct this is a collection of kappa 2 sentences. Since every finite subset of this new theory is satisfiable by a sufficiently large finite model of T, or by any infinite model, the entire extended theory is satisfiable. But any model of the extended theory has cardinality at least kappa a third application of the compactness theorem is the construction of nonstandard models of the real numbers, that is, consistent extensions of the theory of the real numbers that contain infinitesimal numbers. To see this, let sigma be a first-order axiomatization of the theory of the real numbers. Consider the theory obtained by adding a new constant symbol epsilon to the language and adjoining to sigma the axiom epsilon greater than zero and the axioms epsilon zero, omega greater than one, etc., shows that the existence of infinitely large integers cannot be ruled out by any axiomatization sigma of the reals. Topic. Proofs One can prove the compactness theorem using Gödel's completeness theorem, which establishes that a set of sentences is satisfiable if and only if no contradiction can be proven from it. 
since proofs are always finite and therefore involve only finitely many of the given sentences, the compactness theorem follows. In fact, the compactness theorem is equivalent to Gödel's completeness theorem, and both are equivalent to the Boolean prime ideal theorem, a weak form of the axiom of choice. Gödel originally proved the compactness theorem in just this way, but later some purely semantic proofs of the compactness theorem were found, i.e., proofs that refer to truth but not to provability. One of those proofs relies on ultraproducts hinging on the axiom of choice as follows. Proof, fix a first-order language L, and let sigma be a collection of L sentences such that every finite subcollection of L sentences, I sigma of it has a model M I display style math call M underscore I also let I sigma M I display style prod underscore I subset sigma math call M underscore I be the direct product of the structures and I be the collection of finite subsets of sigma, for each I in I let I equals J element of I, J I. The family of all of these sets I generates a proper filter, so there is an ultrafilter U containing all sets of the form I. Now for any formula phi in sigma we have the set A phi is in U whenever j element of a phi then phi element of j hence phi holds in m j display style math call m underscore j the set of all j with the property that phi holds in m j display style math call m underscore j is a superset of A phi, hence also in using losses theorem we see that phi holds in the ultraproduct I sigma M I U display style prod underscore I subset sigma math call M underscore I U. So this ultraproduct satisfies all formulas in sigma. Topic. See also List of Boolean algebra topics lowenheim skolem theorem Herbrand's theorem Barwise compactness theorem Notes